In the first days of the war, railway stations were hubs of despair and disbelief as the first wave of humans fled Ukraine in their millions. Now the network is a symbol of defiance. Even though 30% has been destroyed or is under Russian occupation, the electrified network has kept running despite airstrikes and power outages. No attack is uh, capable of stopping us. We keep running, keep connecting the country. So as of now, we only have 10 trains out of 100 plus long distance trains that are uh, running behind schedule. As trains carried soldiers to the front, they brought back the wounded. These were the first trains in the world to be fully functioning intensive care units operated by Médecins Sans Frontières. But 280 rail workers have been killed either in the line of duty or after being drafted into combat. A Russian missile killed 60 at Kramatorsk railway station. Today, trains are bringing people out of the cities to the countryside, where power cuts are more easily managed. In my university, I need to pass the exam, and I can do it because uh, we have we doesn't have light and internet. I think it is great that the trains are running, that there's electricity and everything is working. I think in the 21st century, when the war started, the fact that the railways are operating is very helpful. The rail network has persevered through war, through missile strikes and blackouts. Trains have evacuated millions of refugees, ferried thousands of soldiers to the front line and brought back countless wounded. The network is prioritising night trains so there's less pressure on the grid during the day. The population seems fully supportive. Rail tracks are made out of steel and people use this uh, word uh, to describe also railway men and women. They say these are uh, iron people because they keep country running despite all the adversaries under all the attacks. Uh, unfortunately, it's a very high price to pay for that. Ukrainians believe that if the trains keep running, then their country will survive.